Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Today, we're going to do a choresh together. Choresh is a Persian word for a stew. We're going to do choresh gaime, which is the Persian split pea and meat stew, one of my all-time favorites. If you'd like to see more choresh videos on this channel, please like and comment below. So let's get to it, make some gaime today. The fundamental method technique to make a Persian stew, a choresh, is to saute all the ingredients and meat separately and then put them all in a pot, add some hot liquid and um, simmer it for a long time. So we small diced one large white onion. You can use yellow onions as well. I have separated about half a cup of it to saute separately. The, the bulk of the onion goes in the stew with the meat and it's gonna simmer. But I'm gonna extra fry, saute about half a cup of it for extra flavor and color. So I have a small pan on medium high. I put a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil. Canola oil will do, grapeseed oil is even better. So don't use olive oil for this, for Persian choreshes at all, because olive oil has a certain flavor that you don't want in your choresh. Use a neutral oil like Canola is fine, any vegetable oil or grapeseed oil if you have it, okay? So a couple of tablespoons right here. Once it starts shimmering, you put your half um, cup of onions right there. You want to saute these for about seven to eight minutes. We need uh, some color, right? We want some dark golden color, but don't burn it too much. We washed uh, and and clean the split peas and let them strain. And then this is washed and cleaned split peas in order to prevent the split peas from disintegrating and falling apart in your stew. We need to saute them for about five minutes, um, just like we do on the onions. So we're gonna do the, um, we're gonna fry the split peas and then they go in the stew with everything else, okay? By the way, split peas you can get from any Mediterranean or Persian market in any large uh, US or Canadian cities in, in Europe, I assume is the same. They come in two different kinds. There's a slow cooked kind and a long cooked kind. The slow cooked kind is, they will, they will take longer cooking time and they won't disintegrate. You wanna use a slow cooked kind, okay? So our onions are cooking and our peas are Sauteing, we keep stirring it once a minute again to make sure the oil and the heat gets all over. Okay, our small batch of onions um, are sauteed, and as you can see, it's got starting to get a little golden color, which is what we're looking for. Uh, we're gonna stop uh, cooking that onion and collect it in this bowl to use it uh, shortly in our stew. Now we also have been sauteing our um, three quarter cups of split peas for this recipe. Look for the recipe in the comments under the YouTube video. So we're gonna combine the fried onions and the sauteed peas together because they're gonna go in the stew together so they can be in the same bowl. So this was our prep, if you will. So if you're making this in a restaurant or in large batch, you're gonna prep this ahead of time um, you can do this earlier, a couple hours earlier if you have to. So we put this away to use shortly. Now we're going to start building our stew in the big pot. I use a Dutch oven. It's a thick bottom, heavy um, metal cast Dutch oven. You can use any stock pot or thick bottom pot that you have. Um, basically the purpose is to do a long simmer, right, of everything. Okay, so we're going to preheat our Dutch oven or a pot, whatever pot you have, medium high to high heat. We put three tablespoons of vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil, whatever you have. Once you see your oil is heated, you're gonna add all of the rest of that large onion that we had small diced. We're going to saute the onions for about six minutes, six, seven minutes on medium high to high. The same way 
uh, we were sauteing except they won't get much color. You have a lot of onion in there and they won't have a chance to um, brown uh, like that small batch we had earlier, right? Okay, so our white onions, chopped onions, have been cooking for about six minutes. Uh, and what I did is once every minute, minute and a half, I gave it a stir like this. Like I said, with the small batch of onions that we uh, golden fried, um, this is different. We're just getting a translucent um, state here. And I want to show you something. Every time you stir vegetables, onions, or meat in a pot that doesn't have any liquid, once you do the stirring, see, it becomes uneven surface. So what you do is you do one of these to get the, the, the onions or vegetable or whatever you're cooking even surface so, so it promotes even cooking, right? Every time you stir, you shake it to get, to get a flat surface. Let me tell you something about the meat. The meat you want to use for gamay and most Persian uh, Iranian horeshes are any meat that has about um, 15 to 20 percent of fat. It doesn't have to be the most tender, expensive cut of meat because you're going to be simmering it for at least hour and a half to two hours. So you could afford to go with um, less expensive cuts of meat. I usually go to the grocery store and get um, beef or lamb for stew. You can go half beef, half lamb. I'm using all beef. One thing to remember, like all the French stews and, and uh, hearty stews, um, if you put a little bit of bone in there, if you have some bone, it will improve the flavor of your stew. So I'm uh, using for half of it, this is a total of about two and a quarter pound of beef, which would be almost uh, a kilogram, a thousand grams of meat. Um, this half of the meat, about a pound of it, is a crosscut beef shank, okay? And I'm going to cut it up, cut up the meat a little bit, and throw the piece of bone in there to improve the flavor. I'm gonna add the half of meat in there, right? And I'm going to um, cut up um, the shank meat that's going in there with the stew meat. And you cut pieces from half an inch uh, to, uh, to an inch cubes, really however you like it. The, the smaller the pieces, the more chunks of meat um, your guests will get in each serving. So it depends on what you're going for. All of this and the bone are gonna go in there. We're going to give this meat and onion a little initial stir. Now we start adding our spices. The, the main foundational ingredient for a lot of Persian Koreshes is turmeric. We're having, I believe, a tablespoon and a half of turmeric here. And the other important ingredient for any Koresh with a tomato character is the tomato paste. You stir it long enough to make sure the turmeric and tomato paste gets on every piece of meat. And then you're gonna saute, continue sauteing for about seven to eight minutes. Like I said, every time you stir about once a minute, you give it a shake like this and let it go for another minute. We're gonna go for seven minutes and we'll come back and start adding some liquid. One thing you need to remember Whenever you're making a Persian Koresh, or any stew for that matter, you need to have a, a kettle of hot water ready here on your stove because shortly we're gonna be adding some water to our stew. Never ever add cold or room temperature water. You wanna add hot water because you don't wanna stop your stew from cooking, right? You wanna keep it going. So always add hot water uh, in every Persian kitchen you always have a, um, for more reason than one, we love hot tea, So, but for cooking stews, you always wanna have some hot water at the ready. All right, we sauteed our mixture of meat, tomato paste, and turmeric for about seven minutes, and we started once every minute. As you can see, there's a dark brown um, layer forming at the bottom of the pot. 
That's okay, don't be concerned. That's all the brown bits and goodness that will be in your stew. So now we are ready to put in the liquids, okay? Like I said, I have some hot water that is gonna go in there. The recipe that I have um, put together uses either beef broth or chicken broth. I've warmed this in the microwave. So I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of either chicken broth or beef broth. By the way, the seven minutes that we sauteed the meat, that was enough to change the color of the meat so it's already cooked some and the surface is sealed, if you will, uh, with flavor. So that's our broth. Then we're going to add three cups of boiling hot water. So that's cup and a half and that's three cups, right? So we put our kettle back here. We're going to stir it up. It's still on medium high here because we are now going to bring this to a boil. Now, I could just leave this and then go for my first 30 minutes of simmering and then uh, put the dried limes and everything else. I have added a touch to this game eh, that I think jazzes it up and brightens it up. I shred a couple of fresh tomatoes. If you have beef steak or aroma, that's fine. I had a couple of Roma tomatoes. See, but using a shredder, most of the skin, it kind of stays in your hand. Uh, we're gonna get all the last bit of that and then throw away the rest. All right. We have both liquids in there. We're gonna put our tomato, crushed tomato, if you will, right there. So now we're going to give this a couple of stirs and crank this up a bit higher and bring it to a boil. See, this thing is boiling now. Look around the edges. We achieved our boil. So we're going to add the split peas and fried onions. You remember the, all that brown, seemingly burned uh, residues at the bottom and sides of the pot? Those brown bits are now in the liquid. They add flavor. We're going to crank this down to simmer and then put the lid on and let it simmer for 30 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and put the dried limes. By the way, our dried limes were pre-soaked in hot water. These are called Amani limes. Uh, these are one of my favorites. Very essential in Persian cooking. There are a couple of key horeshes. Gourmet Sabzi is one. Gaime is another. They use dried limes. These were dried in, in a fascinating process in, in, uh, under the sunlight. So what you do is you rehydrate them with hot water for at least an hour. And, and after the first 30 minutes, they're gonna go back in this too. Amani limes, dried limes. All right, our first 30 minute uh, simmering stretch is over. Check this out. Um, during the 30 minutes, I gave it a couple of stirs um, off camera. So here it is, this is where we are. Now we're going to add our Amani dried limes in there, about five or six of them. Like I said earlier, they've been uh, soaking up in uh, hot water and I have some holes poked in them to make sure all the sour goodness from inside comes out. So we add them to our simmering Horesh stew. And this is, by the way, when we add our salt and pepper. I have a couple of teaspoons of salt. This is based on my experience, my recipe. You need to find out how much salt and pepper you like yourself. Because I've made this stew so many times with this recipe, two um, teaspoons of table salt uh, works for me. And, uh, and one teaspoon of uh, gr fresh ground black pepper. Now we have our Amani limes in there and we have our salt and pepper in there. We're gonna go for another 30 minute stretch of simmering. Then we're gonna put our final touch and kick it up another notch. All right, second 30 minutes is over. I started a couple of times again. Look at this, still simmering nice and I wish you could smell this, but it's about to get a notch higher as far as smell goes. Now the aromatics go in. Look at this. This um, package of spices and aromatics that I have, I have cardamom, I have 
the cinnamon for a little sweetness and smell that, that um, this, um, this Horesh really needs. A uh, little turmeric, um, crushed uh, damask, dried Damascus roses. They're little bitty roses. In Iran, they call them Golem Mohammadi, Mohammadi flower. Um, if you do not find these from Mediterranean or Persian markets in your city, you can put about half to a teaspoon of rose water, okay? Now, saffron, as I've said in other videos, always, always soak saffron in hot or very cold water and uh, steep it, if you will, and then use the saffron solution, the liquid saffron. Don't ever, ever use saffron threads. In this case, because we're gonna push it all into a hot liquid, I'm using ground saffron. This cayenne pepper jazzes it up and plays with your taste buds and it wakes it up, if you will. So my own addition. Uh, let's push all of this into our Horesh now. Look at that. There we go. Everything's in there. We, we are going to give it a good stir. Uh, before I start my 20 minutes, we still have one ingredient that hasn't gone in. I'm gonna wait another 20 minutes then Right before we finish and are ready to serve it, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of fresh squeezed lime juice, and that's gonna set things up right for dinner. There we are. All right, last simmer stretch is over. And I believe we have our game ready. Like I said, we will do one last adjustment of salt and pepper. But before we do that, we'll add a couple of tablespoons of fresh squeezed lime juice. That's my final touch on this game A. It will wake things up. It will kind of tickle your taste buds. Um, you typically serve this with Persian saffron rice and the crunchy tadik at the bottom of the pot. You can put a salad next to it and serve it with other meats, kebabs or um, or chicken if you like, but typically um, this koresh and rice makes a full meal. So I'll buy some crispy um, potato sticks from any grocery store. You go to the chips section, they sell these um, potato sticks, very crunchy, very tasty. So I get some of these and put a couple of tablespoons on each individual portion like that. All right, this is our game A with rice, ready to go. Game A is um, distinctive in one aspect because it's the one stew that's often served um, with religious ceremonies and rituals. But I just like it for taste, especially a little touch of cinnamon and the aromatics that I added at the end are just over the top. So this is one of my favorite Koreshas. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, we'll be back with you with another um, awesome recipe in a couple of weeks. So please like this video if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe right now and hit that little bell button so you and I can keep in touch, okay? Now in the meantime, I think I'm gonna enjoy game A. And then you put some of this game A on the taddy. Mm. Mm.